Sup guys, I'd like to welcome you all on the Butcher channel. We're just continuing with the series of lectures on how to break e4, e5, knight f3 and those bad second moves by black. In previous lesson we had a chance to check the, uh, Damiano's defense and tonight we're just continuing with McConnell's defense. So what's McConnell's defense? It begins after e4, e5, knight f3, and queen f6. I just told you last time, according to my CAD rule, centralization, activity, and development, do not ever put your queen into the center of the board before you develop your pieces. So this is kind of centralizing because it controls the tight center and controls the e5 and d4 squares, but it's kind of active as well, but it's certainly not developing move. And of course, you're not supposed to put your queen into the center of the board that early. First, develop your bishops and knights. So after queen f6, you of course play knight c3. It's developing move. You're just fighting for the central squares. And of course, you just want to jump with this knight on d5. After knight c3, they have to play c6. It's the most logical move in order to prevent this knight e5 idea. There are two more possibilities here for black. It's knight e7 and knight c6. Knight c6 is a bad one. It doesn't stop knight e5. Knight e5 just, you just bring your knight into the center of the board and attack both pawn on c7 and queen on f6. And when the queen goes back to d8, of course, what's the most logical centralizing and developing move for white, it's d4. You open up both of your bishops, fight for the center, attack the pawn on e5, and you kind of force them to take, in which case you probably would take by knight, then develop your light square bishop most likely to c4. Once you remove the pawn from e5, you develop this bishop to f4 or g5, make long or short castle. It depends on circumstances during the concrete game. The second possibility is knight e7 to stop knight e5, uh, which I don't think is uh, surely that logical uh, because it blocks the bishop on f8. But if that happens in your games, you just once again play d4 move. You're gonna see during this short lecture that the most typical way of fighting against this queen, early queen jump on f6 is usually with this d4 centralizing move. So what are you doing with this d4? You just attack the pawn on e5, they have to take, and there we go. The most typical and probably one of the key reactions in this file is bishop g5. Bishop g5 is such an important variation because after bishop g5, you just chase away this queen with the tempi. So after bishop g5, they have to move that queen. They, they usually move this queen to g6. But if they move the queen, for example, to b6, you have a very nice, of course, you take by knight, and they can't play anything else but probably knight c6, which also gives you like much better game after knight b5 and bishop to e3. Uh, but in case they take on b2, you have a very nice trick. Stop the video. As usual, we just do this tactical stuff. And of course, if you stop the video and try to find the move, it's knight db5. You threaten pawn on c7 and threaten to trap the queen uh, with a rook b1. Queen has nowhere to go and you win the game. So that's the tactical trick you should do against your opponents, of course. So after bishop g5, they probably have to put the queen on g6. Queen on g6 is not entirely a good piece. And you do have time to capture by queen. Of course, you're not going to capture by knight because in that case, your bishop would hang on g5. So please, the blunder piece like this. So just take by queen and this early attempt by white to develop this queen, just like black did, in, it's, it's not the same. Because once we do that and they, for example, develop the knight with a tempi knight to six threatening our queen, we actually put the queen on e3 over protect the bishop on g5 and prepare ourselves for a long castle. Having the long castle possibility would also will afterwards give us some e5 ideas because of this queen on a3. They have to play probably d6 to complete development and you play long castle. 
At the moment, you're threatening knight b5 to go after the c7 witness. King is kind of exposed on e8. We've completed our development. We can also chase the queen away on g6 with h4 and h5. And this is just great position for white. After knight c3, looks like the most logical continuation is c6. And once again, I'll stop the video and according to CAD rule, which means centralization activity and development, what is the move, what is supposed to go for? So if you stop the video and if you try it once again, your skills, this time regarding like developing stuff in your openings, you should do and you should go for d4. It's very logical. You open up this bishop. Uh, light square bishop was already open. You fight for the center again. And by the way, playing so active, you're just fighting against the queen on f6. After you play d4, they most likely uh, have to take on d4. And uh, I'll show you why this variation is called McConnell defense because of big Paul Morphy who uh, played back to 1849, New Orleans' famous game against McConnell, and uh, he simply dismantled the guy. That's why I call this lesson dismantling the McConnell's defense, just in a little bit uh, like modern fashion and a little bit better way than Amorifa did. So you, you, of course, play this d4 attacking the center. They have to take on d4, but they can also play d6. By the way, I just want to remind you one thing. With these variations, you're mostly in this, in previous lecture and in the next four lectures because those are going to be the lines that are considered to be pretty bad against e4, e5, knight f3. You're going to get, in most of these situations, winning or at least, in the worst case scenario, at least uh, much better positions. You know what? If you lose your games, please don't blame me. Then better switch this game to, for example, bowling or cricket, but don't play chess, please. Anyways, after d4, they can take, they, they should actually take on d4. If they go, for example, for d6, it's a famous trick. You just go with the bishop g5, and whether they put the queen on e6 or on g6, you just take, and they cannot recapture because of mate on d8. Uh, I'll show you one game uh, in Simul approximately 15 years ago. I played d takes e5. The guy was apparently weak club player who just tried to get like 20 moves against the big butcher, but it didn't happen. Uh, actually, he couldn't even handle 15. He played bishop g4. I played queen d2, and I was, you know, I was over protecting my bishop because he was at this point threatening bishop f3 to take on g5. I played queen d2 over protecting the bishop on g5 and preparing myself for a castle. h6, played bishop f4, he captured an f3, and when he played d5, I took my bishop on e5. Look at this, I already had like, I was up a pawn, I had the bishop pair. At some point, I could maybe use this bishop on h3 or on c4, I can maybe use the g-file at some point. I want to make the long castle and... I was pretty much aware of the fact that the game will be finished very soon. He played knight d7, I played bishop g3, played long castle, I went for queen f4, and he couldn't stop checkmate, or in the best variation for black, to lose the piece with the bishop d6, but the rest would be just technique, and he resigned. So, after d6, bishop g5, please... I like to warn you here, you have to remember that most of these lines with the queen on f6 is refuted with this d4 and bishop g5 idea. So uh, once again, the butcher is warning d4 followed by bishop g5. Watch out. So after d4, if they capture, I just showed you what happens if d6, you play that famous bishop g5. But what happens if they play d4? E takes d4. And now I'll show you. I'll teach you this uh, most modern and definitely the best approach nowadays with the bishop g5. Although a very nice game happened in New Orleans, like just like I previously said, back to 1849, uh, in New Orleans when Paul Murphy was playing white pieces. So uh, McConnell was black and you're going to see like a masterpiece and why many players, even nowadays, talk about Paul Morphy as one of the biggest players of all times. So he played, uh, 
he played e5. Look at this, from this point onwards. Actually, the whole game, he was chasing away this lady. So queen g6, bishop d3, once again. Uh, at that time, it was kind of obligatory to take if your opponent gives you something. And of course, this guy captured rook g1. But by the way, he really has to capture here. I was 94 with some uh, really nice initiative. And after like queen g2 played rook g1, queen h3 played rook g3, queen h5, rook g5. Uh, this queen has no better squares to go. Queen h3, bishop f1, queen s6. But after 94, queen e7, now Paul Murphy played 94. This is the first moment of the game after like almost six or seven moves. Uh, where he didn't attack the queen. So he was threatening knight e6. Uh, this guy, McConnell, played h6. Knight f5. And this is, the, uh, this is the only moment of the game where I have to say that he played uh, kind of a bad move because I'm not sure what would he do after queen b4 check and looks like he's going to lose either knight or a rook. Actually, I'm not sure what would Morphy do, but I'm pretty sure that he would crush this guy anyways. So after queen e6, Morphy uh, came up with knight e6 check, uh, brought this knight into the heart of the black's game and played bishop c4. Uh, so he continues to uh, go after the queen, queen goes back to e7 and Morphy came with knight f7, king c7 and look at this very nice picture, queen d6, black had to take uh, pawn captures. The only move is, of course, b6. Morphy once again came up with check. It's almost made the only move is c5. He played uh, bishop c5. A very beautiful picture happens after king c8, knight d6, it's checkmate. Very nice mating pattern. And after like king a5, I can stop here and give you like, so give yourself like 30 seconds to find a uh, checkmate. It's very nice, it's not so easy. So if you took your 30 seconds, many of you couldn't find easily the solution of this problem. So it's rook g3 uh, following by rook to a3. It's a very nice mating pattern. It's not so obvious and that's why I told you at least 30 seconds, even though position looked at the moment way easier. This guy played b5 and Morphe came with the bishop over k3 and checkmate. So let's go back to a position where, once again, I'm going to repeat the moves just to remember this variation better. e4, a5, knight f3, queen f6. You always play a developing move threatening knight e5 and after c6, I told you d4. And unlike Paul Morphy, who at this moment played e5, key deviation in comparison to the famous game that we've just seen is bishop g5. That's like an improvement. And here, black can play and put this queen literally in two squares, g6 and d6. d6 would be bad. Playing and uh, putting the queen on d6 in front of the dark square bishop, along with the knight on b8, which cannot be developed, it certainly has to be uh, very, very bad. And afterwards, you can choose. You have two plans. I put these arrows just to help you. So you have a plan if you're just a little bit calmer player, so play bishop e2 followed by short castle, or play queen d2 followed by long castle. You can mix these moves, but basically uh, whatever you do, your position and your advantage is just so huge. So after bishop g5, they usually play queen g6. And after queen g6, you've got nothing else but to capture by queen on d4. Simply, you cannot take by knight once again, don't forget, bishop on g5 is hanging. So queen takes d4. And I'd like to stop here for a moment and to make a brief comment about a rising position. Queen can freely take on d4 since there is no knight c6 by black. And it allows white easy initiative and development. Uh, you want to play long castle. You want to play h4 to defend and protect this bishop on g5 and maybe to chase the queen away with h5 afterwards. You also want to open up the back rank for the rooks with bishop e2 and probably drag your rook from h1 to e1 in case you give up on the h4 and h5 plan. And I believe 
this last this lecture was very short you don't have to bother yourself with like tons of analysis and variations here let's just make some general conclusions about this line general conclusion about this suspicious line is first you always try to take advantage of weak and exposed queen on f6 with the idea of straight d4 so always play d4 breaking in the center second after d4 one of the key moves and improvement in comparison to morpheus game is bishop g5 because you gotta gain the initiative bishop g5 is the move that sometimes chases that queen away with many tempis like in morpheus game or uh, bishop g5 just gives you some nasty mating threats like in that line with d4 d6 d takes c5 so i'm talking about the mating patterns in d8 all things considered mcconnell's defense is very rare guessed and suspicious in tournament practice and i believe after logical d4 and bishop g5 white's got an upper hand in this line thank you all for watching i'll try to uh, get these lessons like to make them be weekly lessons to get them as many as possible but basically we just have to finish this e4 e5 lectures once again thank you all for watching hope you're satisfied hope this is going to help you in crushing your pets or opponents and finally hope you're going to subscribe and of course uh, we're just hoping for the first donation thank you so much for watching